Hey everybody, as promised, going live. Um, when I made the gluten-free, strawberry, heaven, gluten-free, dairy-free, uh, a couple people asked if I would go live and show you guys how I made it. Um, so we're actually doing a, a bit of a deviation this time, so I'm going to wait just a couple of seconds um, and see, you know, who all might sign on, who won't sign on, if anybody joins us. Um, so if not, if you happen to see this later, please feel free to... to um, you know, to, to replay it at will. Um, just like I said, wanted to kind of share with everybody how I made it. I, um, for those that don't know, many years ago, I, um, became seriously allergic to milk. So I gave up dairy probably about almost 30 years ago now. Um, I have to tell you, it's amazing. All of the new products that are on the market now for that and gluten-free, it's come such a long way. Um, and then about seven years ago, um, I had to go on what's called a FODMAP diet, which basically is <laughs> this insanely crazy four-page list of food I can't eat um, that just plays havoc with my digestive tract. So I am gluten-free as a result of that. So suffice to say, I'm sure if any of you have special diets, which I know a couple of you did, um, you know how difficult it is to find anything that's halfway decent. So I like to try stuff all the time in my own kitchen, just because I never know. And uh, Kelly Munson from the Sugar Shack um, made the Strawberry Heaven one time. I think it was Terry's recipe, I believe. Um, and I saw the recipe and I was like, oh, God, that looks so amazing. But, you know, I, I can't have angel food cake. Um, if you know anything about gluten-free, you know that um, gluten-free angel food cake isn't really all that great. Um, so what, how can I fix this? So of course everybody in my house likes either graham cracker or cookie crust. So I thought, okay, well let's try something strange and different. So, so let's get into it. So we're going to start with the strawberry one and then I tell you, we're going to make a variation. So, um, I've got almost everything prepped for the strawberry so you can actually see it. Um, and then I'll show you how I prepped it on the, um, on the variation we're going to make. So the first thing we're going to start with is the crust. Um, I'm not sponsored by any of these products, by the way. These are just personal preference. Um, Oreo makes the only gluten-free, um, well, not only, but the only really good um, gluten-free sandwich cookie. Um, double stuff because double stuff. Um, and then literally a half a cup of dairy-free margarine. Um, I think I actually told you all. Um, but I'll show you, it's the Country Crock, Country Crock plant-based olive oil version. They have an avocado oil. Um, I can't have avocados, so that's one that was off my list. Um, anyway, it's going to get loud for a second while I mix these. Um, but I can tell you, I used, in this pack, the last time, I used two of the full sleeves. And I'm going to do the same this time because that seemed to really good, be a good ratio with the rest of the of the dessert. So I already got one in there from leftover from last time and here is number two. Again I just used a food processor because who's got time to crush up cookies? I do. I surely do. So I'm gonna get loud for just a second while we turn this on and pulse the oven oh, doesn't take a And then what we're going to do is add, you have to melt the margarine, um, and I've already done that. I'm going to grab a spatula so you make sure to get all the goodness, um, and then just pour it in. And mix that up. point of course it all starts to stick together so I kind of move things around a little bit just to make sure everything's all crushed up good and then give it one more spin um, if you're asking questions I'm sorry I really can't see you um, my daughter is catching me and she may or may not be able to relay questions to me so all right, so here we go. Uh, now my 13 pan already, um, I always do um, the pan baking spray just because you never know when something's gonna stick. This really shouldn't stick because of the margarine content in it, but to be safe than sorry, I'd rather not have it stick because you know it looks messy when you pour it out of here. 
Alright. So it was that simple. And set that aside. And then you just mash it down till it's all nice and flat on the bottom of the pan without spilling everything else you have sitting on your counter. My kitchen's very tiny, people, so I don't have a lot of room to maneuver. So if you see things splashing and, sp and splishing all over the place, that would be my bad. And we have a new fur baby in the family. Um, Bear Bear joined us two days ago, and he hears me talking about him. And he's not supposed to be in the kitchen, but you will hear his paws all over the place because he likes to follow me around the house. So, wish us luck. He seems to be doing well so far. Okay, so the next step is the middle section. Let me just set this aside and let it... Actually, I'm going to pop this in the refrigerator just so it gets a little, a little more done. All right, so the next, next round of this particular one is going to be the filling, which is a cream cheese filling. Um, it, much like cream cheese, even even non non dairy cream cheese, you kind of want to let it get to room temperature. Again, uh, I mentioned this, but I use Daya. Um, each container is eight ounces, just like a block of uh, Philly cream cheese. And I also use another brand called Tofuti. They have been around forever. They were one of the very first ones to come out with a variation of cream cheese, and it's actually really good. Um, I just like the consistency of the day a better when I'm making something like this because it's a little thinner. So I'm going to use, I'm actually going to make a double batch of this because the next one that I make is going to be a variation and um, we liked the cream cheese so much that we wanted just a little bit more. So that was the only critique we had on this recipe was more cream cheese because you can never have enough cream cheese. So I'm using about two and a third, two and a half. So 16, about 20 ounces of cream cheese, all told. So you put that in and you're gonna mix it with um, a half a cup of sugar. If you were doing it normal, I'm doubling it. So we're doing a cup of sugar, um, a teaspoon of vanilla. I never measure my vanilla because vanilla, because you really can't have too much vanilla. And then you're going to mix that up until it's creamed. I'm using my KitchenAid because it's easy. And I'm using the whisk beater because it gets it more, more creamy in my opinion. Don't forget the locket because it will fly all over the place. Let go for a Thank you guys for joining me. I hope you guys are having fun watching me <laughs> bake in my tiny kitchen. Not even baking. This is so, so easy. So, whipped cream is one of the key ingredients in this. Of course, everybody else has used Cool Whip. I can't use Cool Whip. Um, but really cool, Ready Whip came out with a almond, which is what this is, and then a coconut version of whipped cream. I don't like the coconut, it's too much coconut flavor. I don't taste the almond, my daughter doesn't like the almond, but you know, we all, we all compromise. Uh, one of the things that I bet you didn't know, because I didn't know, I was probably this many years old when I figured it out, because I actually read the instructions on the back of the can, you take about a third of the bottom of the can and run it under warm water, not hot, warm water for 30 seconds, and then you shake it. Um, that actually helps it not clog the cap. 
which I don't know how or why it works, but it does. So I have to get two of these ready. So that's what I'm doing over here, running this can underwater on that crate. <laughs> Any questions, Beth? No. no? Okay. My daughter is watching for me, so if you guys have any questions about anything I'm adding or mixing or anything like that, just give me a yell. Um, we have another situation in our house where we have to watch our sugar intake. Not me personally, as you can clearly tell, I don't have a sugar intake issue. Um, I thought about making this with um, Trivia. Trivia makes a, a kind of a sugar stevia hybrid. Um, and it's actually pretty good. I don't taste the difference, but I've been sugar-free for a while, too, so um, I might try that another time. I don't know what the consistency would be like, so I'm not sure. Anyway, so we whipped this up. It's all nice and creamy now. As you can see, it looks like frosting, kind of. Um, I'm going to give it a stir just to make sure we got everything all in there. Time. Sorry about that. God love you. Got a lot of phone calls during the day. Um. Anyway, um, so as you can see, it literally looks like you know, like what you would see vanilla frosting. Um. So, that is that. Okay. Let's see, guys. Can you see it in there? It's like, just looks like regular frosting. I like it. I mean, you can whip it more and make it even more creamy, which would probably be a, not a bad idea, but I, I like it this way. So, then the fun part. This is, this is my favorite. That's about probably two thirds of that can, and then just like regular whipped cream, you still have to be really gentle folding it in because, of course, your cream cheese mixture is going to be way heavier than that than that is. almost not quite again I think it's all consistency it's what you like or what you don't like the recipe calls for a full container of whipped cream see the crust out of the refrigerator and half of this is going to go in the bottom of that. Question? Thoughts? Comments? Observations? No. Mine's doing a... Yeah, you're 
lagging. Sorry guys, our signal sucks in the house here. Sorry if we're lagging. <laughs> Yeah, we we love our house. We love our neighbors, Hot Clog. Um, and it's a beautiful house, but it's a very old house. And if you know anything about Wi-Fi and anything about old houses, you know plaster walls and Wi-Fi signal do not work together very well. It doesn't matter what kind of system or setup you're using. We've tried it all. The Orbi, what we use now, is, seems to work the best, but even that, we, we just have days where it just doesn't want to work. Okay. So there you go, there's the second layer, which you can see, nice cream cheesy looking layer. And then this is the, this is the harder part. So uh, it calls for four quarts of strawberries. I don't really measure a whole lot ever, so I kind of guessed. Um, but this time we added a little bit of uh, banana to it too, because we just thought that that would taste good. So for this layer, um, beside the strawberries, you add I'm going to go down it for you. Um, a box of strawberry jello. It's just a three ounce box of strawberry jello. Um, a half cup of sugar, tablespoon of lemon juice, six tablespoons of cornstarch. Sounds crazy, but it works. And a half a cup of water. Um, I'm sorry, a cup of water. When you mix this, and this is the key, when you are doing this, Kelly even said it and somebody else said it, stir constantly. Not a lie. You're only going to bring this just to a boil. Um, so the second that it gets to a boil, you you got to stop. And you got to take it off the heat and you got to keep stirring. Because you want it really creamy. I don't know if you can see that. Um, if you don't stir it right, it, it gets lumpy. Um, and it gets lumpy fast. Um, that cornstarch acts quickly. So you're going to take that and you're going to mix it right loose. And you're going to spill it all over your counter first. And mix that right in with your strawberry banana mixture. Um, my hands are clean, people. I wash them 3,000 times a day, which you're going to see me do right now. Hmm. Okay? Yeah, I, I'm not getting sound, but I don't know if they're. Can you guys hear me? Claude, can you hear me? Claude responded to me, yeah. so I'm assuming she could. Okay, I see, I see the likes. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, okay, she's being stupid. I, it's the, we have a combination of errors. We don't know if our system works, and we're both working on the same system, so you can never tell. So if you can't hear me or if you have any questions, my daughter is watching the comments for me because I can't do all of that at the same time. I'm just not that talented. So this actually was a little less thick the last time I made this, and it could be just because I've added the strawberries and that jello mix has been sitting a little bit. Um, it's it's still pretty good. So, and we like the topping really kind of thick. So if you wanted to do less strawberries to make a little bit of a thinner topping, that's really, again, it's all about preference, in my opinion. I, I don't really, I'm not a recipe kind of girl. It's, it's just suggestions in my book. And then this goes right on top of that cream cheese layer you just put in. Thanks, Claude. <laughs> Bethany said, thank you, Claude. Next time you'll have to come over and cook with us, Claude. We'll make dairy-free macaroon. This was so yummy. And my sister-in-law is on here. I see her. And I'm pretty sure she'll now know what I'm bringing to dinner on Saturday. <laughs> All right. So yeah, overfill just a smidge and that's okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to top this with a piece of whatever you want to use, tin foil, saran wrap, whatever. Um, I'm using saran wrap. Um, and for refrigerate it for two to three hours. Here's the key. Tip number, I don't even know at this point. Um, <laughs> no, I'm laughing at Claude. Oh, we should... oh, I know, right? With the gate? <laughs> Him and Larry, they suck. Anyway, um, two or three hours, I can tell you, the longer you let it sit, just like lasagna, the better it tastes. We let it sit overnight. Everybody loved it better the next day and even the third day. 
Um, it kind of just all starts to blend together and it's really, really, really good. Um, you can decorate it any way you want. I'm probably going to do that later after it sets um, just because it'll be easier and look prettier. Um, decorations don't last too very long when you're using Cool Whip. Um, so that's that. Um, that is the first version. Like I said, it goes in the refrigerator, stays there for two to three hours. If you're smart, you'll do it for an hour. I'm only going to show you one more step and the only reason I'm going to show you this is because I want you to see how quickly this happens. So this is um, the next version we're going to do. I'm actually making pineapple. So my family's a bunch of pineapple freaks. We love pineapple. Um, so I just bought crushed pineapple. You could absolutely do this with fresh pineapple that you cut up yourself. I didn't have time for all that, so I didn't. Um, you can use fresh or frozen. I know when Kelly Munson did it, she did um, frozen strawberries. I like fresh because I just like strawberries. I like all kinds of fruit. So I like my fruit fresh except for pineapple. Um, so what you, whatever you choose is completely up to you. To offset the, um, the fact that this is going to be a pineapple topping, we went with pineapple jello. Again, just a three ounce box. Um, again, half a cup of sugar and a cup of water. Um, and then we're going to add, so you can see, one tablespoon of lemon juice. Um, you could use fresh squeezed lemon juice. I, again, I'm, I'm, I'm always about to shoot the shortcuts, dude, because I don't have time. Um, and then the water. You can turn your heat on. You can turn it on medium if you're patient. I am not. I turn mine on high. I cook everything on high. I use a whisk to do this because I found that the whisk really works well at getting the lumps out of the cornstarch. I mean, if you ever put cornstarch in anything, you know, getting lumps out of it is not fun. So, um, so I am this. So in this pot is the Jello, the sugar, the cornstarch. I just added the lemon and I added the water. And this is for the topping. This is what you mix the pineapple in, and that all goes on top of it. Um, it happens really, really fast. And as you can see, I'm, I'm literally constantly stirring. And I tell you, as I'm stirring this, I can feel it sticking to the bottom of this pan. And this is not stuck pan, so um, you just really have to kind of pay attention to it. And you, you want to let, you want to stop because you want to let it come to a boil, but you also got to be really careful about watching it. And I watched it now because I want it to. It'll take forever. But two minutes ago, when I made the strawberry, it took about a half a minute. At least that's what it felt like. So while we're doing that, I can run down the ingredients for you just for one more time. So for the original crust that I did just now with the Oreos, I did two sleeves out of a pack of gluten-free, just regular double stuff Oreos, um, and then half a cup of dairy-free margarine. I use the Country Crock olive oil. Um, melt the margarine, you grind the um, cookies in the food processor, then you pour the margarine in and grind it up a little bit more and you'll get the you know cookie crumb like you would a graham cracker crumb crust, the whole thing, you just don't have to add the sugar because it's already sweet. Um, so for the pineapple, that'll be the variation on that. I found for the first time in a lot ever, um, gluten-free, dairy-free vanilla wafers. And I have to tell you, and again, my kids tease me because my taste buds have changed because I haven't had most of these foods in so long. Um, I think they taste just like um, vanilla wafers, as does my husband. Um, so we're going to use those for the pineapple crust instead of the chocolate. Um, you can do whatever you choose. Um, they actually, the same brand, and I'm not even going to try and say it, say it. Connecticut? Connecticut? I don't know. Anyway, um, they make a, they do make a, um, a gluten-free uh, graham crackers. So you can do graham cracker crust like you would normally, just adding sugar and whatever else you add to it. Um, but I like the cookie, the vanilla wafers, and I think the vanilla and the, ch and the uh, pineapple are going to taste really good together. So. so anyway, crust. Whatever cookie you choose to use and half a cup of melted margarine. Um, and then that's the bottom layer. Middle layer is eight ounces of dairy-free cream cheese. Like I said, I use the Daya just for consistency purposes. Half a cup of sugar, one teaspoon of vanilla. Eh, I always add a little more. Um, and then one can of whipped cream or one container of whipped cream. There is another type of dairy-free whipped cream. It comes in a container like Cool Whip. It's called True Whip. I think it's called TRU. Um, it's coconut again. A lot of the coconut-based stuff, in my opinion, is very heavy on the coconut flavor. So if you don't want coconut flavor, 
Although with the pineapple, that might not be bad. Um, you just don't want to, I don't like the mix of it. So that's, that's the only reason I don't use that. I like the almond, but again, I think it's all about personal preference. Um, that's the middle layer. Again, you, you whip the cream cheese and the sugar and the vanilla until they get really creamy. And then you just fold in that cream, cool whip, whichever kind of, you know, whip topping you're going to use. Um, I did find, actually, I'll share you with, this with you guys really quickly. And it worked, sort of. Um, Silk now makes a heavy whipping cream. And it does whip up just like a heavy whipping cream. But when I attempted to add sugar to it, because of course you want it sweeter for this recipe, it, it fell flat. So it did not work for this. Um, okay, so just in the what, couple of minutes I've been standing here with you guys talking about this, this is, um, this is already starting to thicken um, because it's getting warm quick. And in about another second, I am going to take it right off this heat. And you can watch it when you're when you see it doing this as, as it gets hotter. Um, it's it thickens up, and you're you're going to start getting little balls from the Jello. That's why I I use a whisk to keep the the to keep that from happening too much because I just I just like things smooth. All right, and we are done. So I don't know if you guys can see that very well. So you can see the kind of creamy consistency we got going on there. It's sort of like, you know, it looks like uh, meringue, almost. Um, so the reason I didn't do the strawberry on screen is because what you have to do now, beyond just whipping this a whole lot just to keep it from getting too difficult, is you have to let this cool. Um, so again, the more you whip it, the more you, you know, stir it up like this, the, the cooler it's gonna get. Um, but you, I'm also doing this just to keep it from getting too solid. Um, so I'm going to say, so we'll build the uh, pineapple one off camera and I will post pictures later of both of them done. But the concept is the same. You just do your base, do your Cool Whip mix, and then you do your, um, the topping, put it all together, build all the layers, and you're done. It's really, really simple, really, really easy. Um, I, it's, and it's so, so, so yummy. And you could probably do any fruit you wanted. We're talking about trying it. Kiwi. Um, blueberry. Just, blue, <laughs> blueberry from the nut pet or the peanut gallery in the other room. Um, my daughter's favorite is blueberry anything. Um, so we may, add, we may add some lemon to that too. Cause you like it with lemon, right? Yep. Yeah. So maybe blueberry lemon. We'll see. Um, it's that time of year, you know, when you get, when you get all your fresh, sweet, awesome, um, fruits and such. So, um, so we've been looking, so Claude is the reason for this people. Um, Claude and her lovely husband, Larry, not husband, my bad Claude, don't come through the fence at me. She left. Oh, uh, Larry went pineapple. strawberry picking and, um, brought me back a ton and a half of fresh strawberries and I needed to do something quick with them because I didn't want to go bad. So that's when we tried this. So anyway, Thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, for those that are you know, diet restricted, I hope you found this very helpful. Um, again, my first live, so thanks for your patience in all our little chaos around my house. And uh, Take care. You guys have a great day, and watch for the pictures later of all the finished products. Bye.